Hey everyone, welcome back to Aborigine Reptiles in our first of our breeding series of knobtail geckos. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel and uh, let's get started. So, any of you out there looking to breed this amazing gecko species, uh, we want to start off with a couple of things you need. Um, first of all, definitely get yourself a digital scale of some sort to make sure that the geckos are up to a breeding weight and to monitor. Also, um, a incubation container. Um, as you can see here, we have a sim style um, egg holder that can be placed over water or any various substrates that you like. Um, and or you could just use straight perlite and or any other um, egg incubation medium that you choose. Um, also, it's important to have an incubator of some sort. This is one of our um, custom-made fridge conversion incubators. It's an old wine fridge that we had converted, put a nice um, Herbstat monitoring system on it, and uh, converted it over. But you can use any of the commercial styles that are available out there. Uh, so let's get started with the setup for the females. So we typically do not keep our animals together year-round. This is a... Um, one of the v35 standard bins that we use to house our females you can see it's a lot deeper in the cooler side of the rack bin um, we don't typically keep them at a substrate level this deep all year um, but yeah so we keep it deep on the one side and as you can see the moisture it allows them to dig we want to keep that sand at a not wet but as a consistency that it holds and clumps and easy for them to dig and then keep it dry on the warmer side um, this is a typical setup here are two of our vertebralis a male and a female now some people don't keep their animals together all year round and some do it really depends on the animals this pair we do keep year round um, they seem to not annoy each other and the male seems to leave the female alone for most time so it's up to you to really monitor and understand the nature of your individual animals um, Again, these guys fit perfectly well together, and um, here's another pair um, of our smooth knob tails. These two are not kept together, and we just introduced the males because we wanted to show you guys a couple of the different behaviors that they have. Um, as you can see, typically the male will approach, and um, when it comes to breeding, the females are very um, involved in as opposed to letting the males understand their desire or not. Uh, you'll see the male will approach here, and if we can catch it on camera, the female um, will definitely let the male know her interest level. Um, so despite what he may have in mind, uh, she will most likely flare her tail up as you can see here that knob tail goes up the white flag is uh that she is not interested so when you do introduce animals it is important to monitor them because uh, you don't want them to fight or anything of that nature um when the female does show that she is not interested uh it's you can leave them in for a little while but if the male does become a little um too forward uh, long term, it is best to remove them and try again another day. Uh, if she was receptive, the female would allow the male to approach and or mount her. Um, here's another pair, uh, one of our Italian red males there, who, uh, as you'll see, puts on quite the show. Um, and what I'll do while we're watching this pair um, court is kind of talk you through the methods of um, cooling and brumating and getting the knobtails ready for breeding. Uh, it's very standard uh, in, in terms of many other gecko uh, species. What we do is we do cool the animals um, either again separately or together depending on the individuals um, for about three months and we do drop it down quite a bit. Uh, most of the animals that we work with since they are um, all Australian have a very similar cooling temperature um, and we can drop this down uh, to as cool as the um, low 60s at night and really not breaking much more than that um, during the day. Uh, we also make it a lot drier. We always have the animals um, 
have access to a water bowl, but we don't miss them as often, maybe only once a week, um, as opposed to uh, the standard two or three times a week. So what we'll do is we'll maintain that lower temperature, again, high 60s, mid 70s, um, for roughly two to three months. Um, no fluctuation in daytime and nighttime. And then what we will then do is we'll increase the temperatures back up to having it about 90 on a hot spot. And um, we'll keep that 90s consistent on the uh, rack. We will not do any daytime or nighttime variation there. Um, and we'll slowly increase that over a, a couple of weeks. Uh, as you can see here, very hilarious how uh, amazing this little uh, red Italian male puts on quite the show, <laughs> despite the female's lack of interest, as you can see. Um, but back to the temperatures, yeah, so we keep that at 90. We increase food, and then we increase misting. So we have the water available, but then we do mist the entire enclosure as well as the hides um, quite liberally for a, a couple of months to kind of stimulate a wet, warm season. Um, again, during that cooling period, we do not feed as often. Maybe we make food available once, maybe twice a week. Um, so it is a true brumation and the animals um, seem to fare very well. It is also critically important because the males, um, in terms of uh, how viable and fertile the sperm um, supposedly has direct correlation around decreased temperature. Um, so you could put these animals together like this without brumation and would probably get the same behavior. But in terms of the female ovulating and the male actually producing viable uh, fertile sperm is greatly decreased if they do not have that cooling period. So again, um, our little guy here is digging away and putting on quite the show with his tail. So very interesting behavior. It's great to watch. It's very interesting. They all have their, their own um, approaches. So wanted to share this one with you guys as uh, he is a joy to watch uh, put on a great show. Um, it is important to remember too that sometimes uh, the males will go off feed for quite some time because their main priority is the female. So it is important to monitor weight throughout the entire process, uh, both for male and female. You don't want either animal too stressed. This is a slightly stressful situation. And if that is the case, you want to remove the animals um, and put them back um, in their separate locations so that they can uh, kind of chill out for a little bit. Um, the hides are the same in terms of, sorry about that, <laughs> the hides are about the same um, when it comes to the setup here. So if you do have a successful breeding, uh, nutrition is key. Um, having an animal have access to a high quality calcium mineral supplementation as well as vitamins is um, paramount for knobtails to succeed. This is a huge stress on their, um, you know, their depletion of all of their stores. So making sure they're fed um, a healthy gut loaded insects with um, good supplementation is vital in order to produce healthy young and eggs. Um, once they do this, their appetite will increase dramatically and in a couple of, um, in, in less than a month, you'll typically see females digging their burrows, as we can see here. Another cool thing about these racks is that you can go underneath and see where the animals are, as well as see the eggs. Um, and this is a picture of that same rack above. You don't see her at all, um, but below she is digging. So when you go down below, she will uh, dig a little burrow, um, depending on, they'll try a couple of test sites. So just keep an eye on them, watch, they'll start digging a day or two before, um, and they will then go subterranean and dig a great little hole. Um, takes them a couple, two, three hours. They usually do it in the evening hours. Um, this one here, she laid her eggs already and is already popping her head out and starting to backfill in, and they will, um, fill the entire passage uh, you won't even know that they were there so once you find it uh, you can then excavate as we did here to find the eggs uh, just be very careful they are slightly soft in the beginning um, so excavate the eggs with care and then you can remove them to uh, that sim container that we talked about um, and or any other incubation medium these eggs are pretty hardy so you can um, incubate them in a wide variety of substrates from vermiculite to perlite to hatchrite. Uh, there's a new clay um, rock type substrate that a lot of people have used with great success. Um, or you can just use the sim container over water. 
you can experiment with different ones, whatever works for you, whatever type of um, incubator you have um, really uh, will depend on how different you set it up. So there we go with that. And if you do everything right, a, a few months later at a uh, temperature of around the mid to high 80s, you will have adorable little knobtail geckos. Uh, if all of the outlined material here in the video is followed with high nutrition and making sure the animals are up to a proper breeding weight, um, which depends and varies on each individual species. So definitely do your research there. A lot of great articles on the internet. If you follow all of those, um, you will get healthy, viable, little, adorable animals like this. And here's one of our little vertebralis babies, which are arguably one of the cutest things in nature. So I hope this was beneficial to you guys. If you have any questions, let us know. Like and subscribe.